What is up, everybody? Randy Paddock here, long time no see. So I haven't made a list in a while, so I figured, hey, why not do a list? I was going to do it on Easter, but I ended up eating a lot of carbohydrates, which I don't usually do. Drank some IPAs, came home, went to sleep. There it is. All right, so this is going to be what I like to call the jerk store, a.k.a. the 20 biggest pricks in my eyes in movies. All right, so this was actually maybe the toughest of the list to do. I thought the action movies list was tough, which it was. But thinking about all the dickheads in every movie, it's it was actually so fun. Um, but it was also very hard as well because there's a ton of them. And there'll be some honorable mentions along the way. As you can see, Leroy is here as always to help us out. So without further ado, let's get cracking into it. So number 20, I'm going to kick it off kind of on the lighter side. And again, like all my lists could be controversial. You might not like it. Make your own list if you don't. And that would be Derek from Step Brothers. So that's just played by the guy that from Parks and Rec, right? So it's the number one. Um, they're hiding out in like the uh, when they're hiding out in the tree fort. He goes up, lifts his shirt. He's got the six packs. Like you like that? You like that? Just so funny. Such an asshole. Fucking Catalina wine mixer. So number twenty, Derek from Step Brothers. This is out of order, so forgive me. And then we have number nineteen. Bill Lumberg, Office Space. Um, yeah. So we're gonna need you to come in on Saturday. Yeah. So if you've seen that movie, you know, and if you've ever had a boss like that, you know, may the Lord be with you because that that he did an awesome job of just being such a fuck. So Bill Lumberg is number nineteen. So that brings us to eighteen. This again, there's some obscure ones on this one, and it was tough, but I kind of jumped around. This is Matt from the movie Encino Man. So if you don't remember the movie Encino Man, it's with Pauly Shore, Rudy, and Brendan Fraser when he, they uh, thaw him out and he was a caveman. Matt, who was like the hockey playing dickhead, he had like the chiseled jaw, he had like the flat top, and this was his this was his move. Anytime someone would talk, he'd go, shush! Like he would just do that to people. And then like there's the one time when Sean Austin or Ass, whatever his name is, Rudy, it's like looking at his chicky, it comes over like this. He's like, does this. Cracks his knuckles a lot. You know, gets in the fight with the Encino man. Shush! Good shit. Matt, total dick. 17. Um, Scott Farkas from Christmas Story. Right? How big of a dick was that kid? And he was super ugly. He had the coonskin cap. He had the crazy yellow teeth and those crazy red eyes, right? Just torturing kids, like pushing over, you know, the little guy, Georgie, or not Georgie, whatever the hell his name is when he's in that suit and he can't move and just chasing Ralphie and the boys around. Asshole. All right. So that was 17. 16 would be... Dun, 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 dun. Freddy Krueger. So this one was just like a random one that I thought of, but it's such a fact too. Like when I was... um. When I was little, I used to be scared of Freddy Krueger. Obviously, he haunted dreams. So that was a scary thing. But if you go back and watch like the Freddy movies as an adult, they're hilarious. He might be the biggest asshole ever on the planet. I mean, just the way he would fuck with people. Such a dick, right? He would just toy with him before you'd kill him. So I know it might not be the right genre. And if we're talking like bullies and kind of dickheads, he doesn't really fit. But Freddy Krueger's a dickhead. Trust me. Give him a watch. Moving on. We have... 15. So, this would be Harry Ellis from Die Hard. Remember him? Um, so, he was like the cokehead yuppie guy from Die Hard. Um, you know, he, he wanted to help. He wanted to help Hans Gruber and they end up taking him out. But he was just such like an 80s kind of fuck. Cokehead, just blah, 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 smug asshole. Um, he gets his in the end, though, so it's all good. So, that's nice. So, remember him. All right, 14. So, keeping it in the theme of 80s pricks, and there was a lot in the 80s, and a lot of this actually comes from the 80s, but check out, he was like the outsider in the Rat Pack, so I don't think he was in the Rat Pack, I'm sorry, the Brat Pack, excuse me, it was the 80s, but he was in a few of the movies, and he was a dickhead in all of them, so he was in Less Than Zero, he played like Rip or whatever, the fucking drug dealer that made Robert Downey Jr. suck dicks, but not that one. I'm talking about Blaine in Pretty in Pink. Such an asshole to Molly Ringwald. Again, he's like a just a yuppie 80s, got feathered hair, wearing like suits with no socks, just a fucking jerk off. Treats Ducky like shit, treats Molly Ringwald like shit. No bueno. 
and then that would go up to, we're going to get in the 90s now, it might be 99, could be 2000, number 13, Mike Dexter. So if you've seen the movie Can't Hardly Wait, you know about Mike Dexter. If you're a younger kid later on in life, he's also known as the dad in Twilight. But Mike Dexter in Can't Hardly Wait was awesome. He was dating the hottest girl in school and then he dumped her on senior year because he thought he was going to go bang all these college chicks, but then he ran into Jerry whatever, the fat kid from Stand By Me who plays Trip McNeely. And he tells him that you can't get hot girls as a freshman in college. So he tries to get her back, and he doesn't. But he, he pulverized, and he's like a sweetheart at heart, right? He calls her Amanda. Who's going to want you? Somebody. More like, nobody. Gets drunk. He's a dickhead to the nerd kid, but then they end up becoming drunk buddies. And then he, like, the one that the cops come and the nerd goes to jail. He, like, bails him out, but then fucks him the rest of the time. But Mike Dexter is an asshole. All right. Moving on. So that would bring us to... Would that be 13 or 12? I believe that would be 12. And that's Walter Peck from Ghostbusters, a.k.a. Dickless. All right, so Ghostbusters is one of the best movies ever. You know, like the, the original Ghostbusters is awesome. Bill, Moore, Bill Murray, Hale Ramis, Dan Aykroyd. I mean, they're like awesome in that movie. And that guy... What the hell? I forget what he's in other shit too. He's in like Biodome. He plays a bad guy, but the guy that um, that plays Walter Peck, he's just he's another one of those like eighty smug pricks. And then Bill Murray calls him Dickless, which is hilarious. And that and that or Dan Aykroyd calls him Dickless, and Bill Murray confirms, yes, this man has no dick. So it's a good one, but he sucks. All right, and then that would move us up to eleven. So this one maybe a little controversial, but I think it's true. He's a good guy, but and it's part of his persona. Nonetheless, he's an asshole. That's Bruce Wayne in the Dark Knight series. So Christian Bale does a good job. I think he really came into it during American Psycho, like that kind of smug, yuppie prick. But as Bruce Wayne, he does it a lot. Especially like, I mean, he kind of cools down a little bit as it goes on. But in Batman Begins, he's like a he's a dick face, right? But he's got to be right. Like that's his real mask or whatever. Nonetheless, dickhead. All right, let's keep going into the top ten here. So coming in hot at number ten. <laughs> Dennis Nerdly or Nardy or Nerdy or Nardy, Dennis Nardy, Jurassic Park, Newman in Jurassic Park. All right, what a dick. So if you remember, his like plans to rip off like the the eggs and sell them and all that. And he's just he's like Newman. He's so Newmany in that he's just just so fat and sweaty with his glasses. He's like smoking cigs. You know, I remember Samuel Jackson's in there, like giving him shit, like hold on to your butts. But then he's sitting there, and then he puts in that he puts in the code so no one else can get into it. Like the most annoying thing ever, they're trying to hack into his computer and goes ah 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 ah, ah right with this stupid fat face. Uh, he ends up getting it from the spitter, anyways. Gets his, but he's a total dick. All right, number nine. So this guy from my childhood. I mean, if you grew up in the eighties, nineties, you know this guy. And you know he's a son of a bitch. And it's Buzz McAllister, right? Straight up from home alone, just torturing Kevin McAllister. Buzz, not only does he have a tarantula, he's like gross, pasty, ginger. But he eats all your pizza. And he'll tell you, you could throw it up or barf it up. <clears throat> right, Buzz does one of those. Just tortures that kid, makes him go nuts. And then what makes him a bigger prick is he does all these dick moves. And then... Kevin retaliates, and the family hates Kevin and calls him all these names, and they ultimately end up leaving him home for vacation because they hate his guts. So fuck you, Buzz. All right, moving on up to number eight. So this one was crazy hard for me. So eight, this is from The Karate Kid 3, all right? And in The Karate Kid 3, if, you, if you're sleeping on that movie, wake the fuck up and go watch The Karate Kid 3 because it's awesome. But there's three dickheads in that. Every, there, maybe four. I'll get four, five, five. All the bad guys are dickheads in this. So, the fifth is like the Spanish guy that breaks all Danielson's shit when they go into the um, bonsai shop. Like, Snake gives him the order and he just breaks his stuff. So, he's a dickhead. Snake is an asshole, right? You want to get bad, this is the guy to get bad with. That's right, right? Snake, total dick. All right. So, you got Sensei John Kreese back from the dead. He's like the original Cobra Kai dick face. Terry Silver is a son of a bitch, all right? But that's not even the worst. The worst motherfucker out of all of them and the biggest dick, the bad boy, Mike Barnes. Because he's like a, he's like a mercenary dickhead. So what happens is Terry Silver sees his pages. He's like taking a bubble bath like a prick. And he sees 
bad boy Mike Barnes, and he buys him to go in the tournament against Danielson, right? And so first, Barnes meets him, and he's negotiating with him, and then he says, hey, do you fight as hard as you negotiate? He says, harder, and I want it in writing. So that's a bad boy Mike Barnes. But he says a good line when he's trying to get Daniel to, like, uh, sign the papers. He keeps fucking with him. But he goes to the chick one time. He's like, he says something to Daniel. He's like, you're going to die, LaRusso, something, something. He said, and you, you can dream about me. He says it to the girl. Awesome line. Bad boy Mike Barnes, asshole. All right. Giddy up. Here we go. So that was eight. So then that would have to be seven over here. And then seven would be General Jessup and a few good men. So Nicholson and you can't handle the truth. He is a condescending dickhead in that movie. And it's awesome. But he's such a prick, right? When he's talking about how he's not afraid because he eats breakfast 50 yards away from a bunch of people that want to kill him at Guantanamo Bay, right? When he's like talking about, um, when he's <laughs> when he's talking about fucking uh, Tom Cruise wearing his white faggy uniforms down to his hood and just all that shit. And when he's like, you can call me General, right? And, and all this stuff. Just a son of a bitch. And he tells someone that they can't handle the treat, or the treat, the, the tooth. They can't handle the tooth. That was the rock and the tooth fairy. He can't handle the truth. But also, no remorse for doing what he did because he fucked with the drawn damn Marine. All right, so he sucks. Moving up to six. So, Chet Donnelly. You know what that's from? Weird Science. R.I.P. Bill Paxton. Pour a little liquor. Chet was such a dick, right? He was like the ROTC, like, like crazy guy. He had like the fatigues on the wife beater, the square cut. And the one scene, like obviously he's just fuck with his brother all the time. He's such an asshole. But the one scene when they come home like pissed drunk and he's smoking the cigar and just blowing the smoke in their face going, mm, mm, mm. that's like a reoccurring theme with these assholes is like to try to get people to throw up making that noise. But Chet was a dick. And the good thing is most of these guys get theirs in the end. Chet gets his by Kelly LeBrock in the end again. R.I.P. Bill Paxton. You are missed. You were the shit. All right. Top five. So to be on the top five of this list, like you had to be awesome and a dickhead. So it starts with maybe one of the better dickheads and characters ever in any movie, I think. And that's going to be Dingham in The Departed. Mark Wahlberg's character in The Departed, right? Best one-liners that he has. The way he treats Leonardo DiCaprio is awesome, right? Just calls him a lace curtain Irish fuck, right? He's a pussy. He's not no tough guy from Southie, right? His old man was a hump, right? Just talks all this shit about all the dead members of his family, right? He rather, when uh, when Matt Damon's pressing him to get info, he says, fuck that. I'd rather put in my papers, right? Gets two weeks with pay, right? World needs plenty of bartenders, but dang, it's just such a dick. You treat people like mushrooms. You feed them shit and you keep them in the dock, right? So phenomenal, phenomenal guy. Phenomenal character. Real big dickhead. All right, number four. So this, and this is really what, got me to think about this list as I was at my sister's house on uh, like last Friday and the Green Mile came on and Percy Wetmore from the Green Mile might be the biggest cocksucker ever to walk the planet okay if you forgot about the Green Mile give that movie a relook I watch again like parts where I'm like oh yeah but he is such he's like the embodiment of just an entitled dick right like his he like He's like sadistic, right? Likes to beat up on the prisoners a little bit, but he can't get like Hanks can't fire him because his mom's like or his aunt or somebody's like the governor. I forget how the hell it works out. But the ultimate dick move is like he just works on death row because he's like a fucking nutcase and he wants to see someone die. But remember, they got it. They're they're going to kill somebody. You gotta get the sponge wet to put it on their head, and he doesn't get the sponge wet, and the guy like just brah, like like go lights on fire and fries up all crazy and that yeah. Real big son of a bitch. Give that movie another watch. All right, top three. All right, and I think these three might go down in the history of some of the, again, best characters. And that's the cool thing. Some of these assholes are make for some of the best characters ever invented. So this one has a special place in my heart. Um, he ran across, you know, multiple films. He was an asshole in all of them. We also named one of my dogs after him growing up who also was an asshole. And this is Biff from Back to the Future. So Biff... Such a prick. All right, as a young man, right, he's a bully, picking on McFly, right, calling him a chicken when no one's supposed to call him a chicken. He's a borderline rapist, right? So he's always, like, taking McFly's mom, and he's, like, trying to rape her as a kid. And he's, like, trying to steal her. Lorraine, nobody's going to have you if I can't have you, nobody. He's, so he's a kidnapping, rapist, bully, right, as a child. 
So that's kind of fucked up. Dan has an old man. He's a degenerate gambler, right? And he teaches his young self to be a degenerate gambler. And then in the future, in like the 2000s, when he's got that fucking hoverboard that goes on water, he's still an asshole. So all throughout his life, and then remember when he like makes it rich from being a gambler and has Biff Tower and he's like Trump? Yeah, he's a fucking dickhead then. He's got the wife like as a cat like as a captive, right? And then he's banging these other broads, but she's like she's a prisoner and I think like and then he tries to kill his son. Biff is just an all around just a terrible, terrible, terrible human being. And our little shit Maltese dog named Biff was a son of a bitch too. Alright, moving on up. Top two. This was tough for me, but I think you know, I already went over all the dickheads in the Karate Kid series, obviously, but the number one dickhead was Johnny. Right? Leading the Cobra Kai to take out Daniel LaRusso. Just a real son of a bitch. All right. Again, some common themes. And and the guy that plays him, it's like his name's like William Zabka or something like that. Like he plays, a, he was an awesome dickhead in the 80s. So let me give you his hit list. So I'll go back to the Karate Kid, obviously. Two, just one of the guys. He was a dickhead. Right, he was like a weightlifter. I always wore the weightlifting gloves, and he would go into the um, when everyone was eating lunch. He'd lift up the trays, and he lift up the lunch tables and spill everyone's tray. Real dick, and he used to say "no pain, no gain" and like punch people. So he was a dick face in that. He was also in Back to School. Right now, he was in college, had the feathered hair on the diving team, still the same old, old asshole, and he was giving melon. She said, "What do you know, another shit faced melon?" Right in his fraternity. Real dick. But it all started, his roots started as Johnny, the cocksucker from the Cobra Kai. So, some things he did. Again, all these guys, like, the, they kind of hit their chicks and were borderline possessive rapists, right? It was it was the same with him and Elizabeth Shue in that one. Um, some of his highlights, beating the shit out of Danielson on a regular basis, doing a burnout on his dirt bike with sand in his face, dressing like a skeleton and rolling up doobies in the bathroom, so just smoking weed, being illegal. Hold on, I gotta roll this number. Um... Ultimately, just a real dickhead. Tried to fight an old man. Um, you know, leading the whole group of Cobra Kai. Dutch was a prick. The other guy's like, yeah, Johnny, put him in a body bag, yeah. And then the ultimate, well, John Kreese was the puppet master, but the ultimate dick move is he swept the leg, right? He kicked the hurt leg of, of Danielson. And then again, you know, he ended up, you know, showing him respect and giving it to him, but an asshole. And then number one, and I think maybe the best character in any movie ever made, and for sure, the biggest asshole is fucking Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore. Is the biggest asshole in any movie ever. And let me give you some of the highlight reels of stuff that he says. So he just plays essentially this really cocky ass golfer. But um, what happens is this. He gets in the beef with Happy Gilmore because he wants to get his gold jacket. Right? He hasn't got it yet. And he's got to win a Happy Gilmore could threaten him. So he does some things to fuck with Happy. So first thing he does is... He when Happy's grandma's house goes to auction, Shooter gets it, right? Then Happy tries to fight and says, no, no, you touch me. I burn the house down. I piss on the ashes, right? So he said he'll do that to the guy's grandma's house. Then he goes up to him. He's like, hey, yeah, you know that room up on, like in the middle of their golf match? So you know that room on the second floor? He's like, yeah, that was my room. He's like, yeah, I think about making my trophy room. Hi, grandma. And he like waves at her after he gets her house. And then when he's like talking to Happy's chick, he's like, yeah. And he's like, I'm a 42 long and my right arm's just a little longer than my left. Right, just a dickhead like that. Um, he talks about like he makes ha ha happy go to the ninth hole, nine o'clock, to get sprayed with the water. He rhymes, "You'll pay." Listen to what I say, right? I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. He does that. Um, he gets that one guy to do his bidding for him. Keeps promising him going to Sizzler, right? It's fucking shooter man, bang! He does like the cactus jack, pow! Suck on that baby, right? Shooter fucking McGavin. The greatest character in the world and the biggest asshole on the planet. I'd hit it off of Frankenstein's fat foot. You play it where it lies. All right? Remember that shit. So that was my list. If you don't like it, who gives a shit? Write your own. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel. Also, go on iTunes. Check out the podcast. Share it. Give it some likes. All that's awesome. Leave your list in the comments. Have a good one, y'all. Until next time. Peace.